Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is great pleasure to have Professor Naoto Nagaosa as a uh, speaker, speaker of, of special lecture series just before Christmas. Uh, he's going to give us three lectures starting from today until Wednesday. And uh, before we begin, let me have just a brief introduction to, of Professor Nagosa. There is almost no need to introduce Professor Nagosa. Uh, in one word, he's, he's the most influential condensed matter theorist in the world, I think, at the moment. And he had, he had a lot of contributions starting from uh, high tissue corporate uh, through multiferroid and, uh, and the topological insulator and quantum hole effect and so on and until recently. So he got his uh, PhD degree uh, from the University of Tokyo right, in 1986. Uh, since then, he he became associated with the, the University of Tokyo Department of, of Applied Physics as a uh, research associate, um, starting from 1986, and he became lecturer, associate professor, and professor. And uh, after serving thirty some years, finally he got retired. I think last year and uh, but still he keeps important position as a um, group director in Riken Center for Emergent Matter Science and he will continue uh, to have his current position at Riken and he also garnered several uh, numerous honor and prize so let me just mention a few of them. And as early as in 1995, uh, Professor Nava also received the Nibar Prize for his contribution um, of gauge theory of strong correlation spectrum and applied for high corporate. And he also received the famous Nishina Memorial Prize for his contribution of theory of anomalous hole effect in 2005. And he is also the first uh, recipient of our center's prestigious award, Benjamin Lee Professorship in 2012. And uh, he is also a great record as Thompson Reuter, highly cited researcher in the period of 2014 to 2022. And the most recently, he became foreign member of National Academy of Science in the US. And he received also Honda Memorial Prize very recently, and so on. Uh, let me end uh, this brief introduction uh, of Professor Nagawasa. And uh, uh, please welcome Professor Nagawasa. Thank you very much. So I hope uh, some people are online. <laughs> yeah, this is my great pleasure to be with, uh, with here. I uh, especially would like to thank uh, for the invitation. So actually today I will talk about uh, you know, this local transport and battery effect in superconductors. So these are relatively a new topics in condensed matter physics. And uh, people are now uh, interested in this uh, nonlinear phenomena in condensed matter systems. Uh, yeah, most of the uh, uh, physical properties are described in terms of uh, linear response theory uh, developed by Professor Kubo, for example. But now uh, we are moving gradually towards a nonlinear regime. So <clears throat> here is a list of collaborators. Uh, yeah, so especially 
my very excellent students, uh, Ryohei Wasaki and Ko Misaki, played an important role in this subject. And also, uh, recently, I have a collaboration with uh, James Hay and also Taiko Wo. Actually, Taiko is, uh, was a student of uh, Bon Junya in SME, and he came to my uh, place as a doctor. And then uh, Yukio Tanaka is my long-term uh, collaborator, who is now a uh, professor at the Nagoya University, and Shintaro Hoshina. Uh, Hoshina. And also recently, I have a uh, close uh, collaboration with uh, Professor Kyle in Pixar University. And also, <clears throat> I have uh, uh, many, many uh, collaborations with the uh, experimental group led by Tokura, Kawasaki, and Iwasa. So these are the list of uh, uh, my collaborators. So let me start by non-discourse transport, non-central symmetric system. So non-central symmetry means the uh, absence of uh, invariant symmetry in space. Uh, in space. But uh, now uh, another important symmetry is a uh, time reversal symmetry. And suppose you have a uh, flow of a current in some direction. Can you see my pointer here? Okay. So uh, these are left direction and the right direction. So the amount of the current should be different depending on the direction of a current. So that's the uh, phenomena of a non reciprocal transport. So but uh, actually, uh, in addition to the spatial inversion symmetry breaking, uh, actually you need sometimes the uh, time reverse symmetry breaking uh, because uh, if you reverse the uh, direction of the arrow of time, then this uh, current direction will be reversed to this direction. So uh, that is the uh, uh, best reason why you need both the inversion symmetry breaking and also the time reversal symmetry breaking. So uh, actually, here is a, a famous Onsager reciprocal relationship, uh, which depends, uh, which comes from the uh, microscopic time reversal symmetry. Uh, namely, the Hamiltonian contains sometimes a uh, magnet field or a spontaneous time reversal symmetry breaking by the magnet field. Then uh, B turns into minus B by the time reversal operation. So associated with this time reversal uh, operation, uh, you have a relationship of uh, conductivity tensor, sigma mu nu, uh, in this expression. The first, you are a mu and mu component. Uh, this are mu and mu are x, y, z in the spatial indices. And the k is the uh, uh, momentum, and the omega is the frequency, and the v is a magnetic field or a magnetization. So then, once you apply the time reversal symmetry, then v goes to minus v, and the k goes to minus k. But uh, please be uh, noted that. Uh, omega remains the same, but uh, this uh, mu nu component will be a mu nu component, right? So then, for example, if you have an xy uh, component, then the uh, Onsager uh, uh, relationship uh, gives the uh, uh, relation between the xy and the yx, right? But if you have a diagonal xx, then it will remain xx, right? So uh, today, uh, mostly we are interested in the diagonal component of uh, the activity. So in that case, uh, uh, this uh, uh, xx is uh, related to the sigma xx, and the k goes to minus k, and the b goes to minus b. Right. So actually, uh, Professor Lipkin in 2001 uh, has a very interesting but uh, heuristic argument, replacing this uh, momentum k by the current itself. Uh, the idea is uh, once you have uh, a current flow, the electron has uh, some momentum. So that momentum K is then replaced by the current I, right? So then uh, satisfying uh, this relationship, replacing K by I, he gave an uh, empirical expression for the resistivity, which depends on the uh, I and P. 
So uh, then, uh, because of this uh, relationship, on say yes, right? Then you need a product uh, uh, between E and I to have a uh, uh, non disproportional transport. Namely, the resistivity depends on the direction of I through this uh, uh, so called gamma path. And uh, this uh, uh, degree of uh, or strength of uh, non disproportional transport is characterized by this uh, gamma coefficient. So uh, this is the most uh, uh, typical expression for the so-called uh, diode effect right? because uh, the current flow depends on the direction. So, but uh, uh, actually, uh, this is not the uh, this local transfer. So according to uh, the linear or nonlinear response and time reversal unbroken or broken, uh, we have a two by two uh, matrix and describing this uh, non disposable transport, right? So, if you are interested in this uh, diagonal component, and once you have a time reversal unbroken case, uh, then this uh, uh, sigma xx linear response is actually forbidden, right? Because uh, uh, you have b and the minus b are related to each other, right? And because the b is zero. Uh, because the time you have unbroken case, right? But uh, <clears throat> once you go to the nonlinear response, so even without the uh, uh, magnetic field or magnetization, you could have uh, a non reciprocal nonlinear response. So the uh, one example is the nonlinear Hall effect, uh, recently studied very extensively, extensively, and also pin junction in the semiconductor phase is also. Uh, non reciprocal transport without the uh, time reversal symmetry broken. And then the another is the optical uh, shift time. So, this is uh, one of the uh, most uh, interesting topics in the nonlinear optical phenomena. And this class it exists, right? But the uh, uh, more, uh, more common case is uh, both the time reversal symmetry and the inversion symmetry are broken. And then uh, we have a non disproportional nonlinear optical effect and uh, electric magnet tidal effect, which is uh, given by this expression and inverse cable design and the magnet tidal anarchy, etc. So the one comment here is that this uh, inversion and time reversal symmetry are closely related to the very phase physics in uh, condensed matter system. Uh, namely, once you have a uh, time reversal symmetry. So this uh, very curvature in momentum space, B of K, is uh, related uh, between K and minus K in this expression. And the inversion symmetry uh, uh, imports the condition that B and minus, uh, K and minus K, the very curvature is the same. So if you have both the time reversal and the inversion symmetry, then BK is automatically zero. So in other words, once you break the inversion symmetry or time reversal symmetry, then the, uh, this uh, geometric nature of a block uh, wave function enters into the uh, uh, game. And then uh, this uh, very curvature or uh, this uh, geometric nature becomes uh, very relevant once you break uh, time reversal or inversion symmetry. So then this uh, microscopic uh, picture for the inversion symmetry breaking or time reversal symmetry. Okay, so now how about this uh, uh, expression? Right? So then the gamma value is uh, uh, given in the unit of uh, Tesla inverse and the Ampere inverse. So uh, this uh, gamma value in the typical material is uh, usually very small. So 10 to the minus 3 or even uh, 10 to the minus 1. But the uh, most uh, characteristic quantity is uh, this uh, third term compared with the unit. So experimentally, this uh, third term is uh, typically 1 in 1,000 or 1 in 100, right? So then uh, this uh, tiny effect is uh, uh, usually uh, almost negligible compared with this unit, right? But uh, the reason why this is so small is the following. So uh, actually we need 
both the time reverse symmetry breaking and the inversion symmetry breaking, then for each symmetry breaking, we have some energy uh, order, energy scale. So the inversion symmetry breaking is represented by the spin orbit interaction because the uh, spin orbit interaction uh, give rise to the spin splitting due to the inversion symmetry breaking. And also the uh, magnetic energy, mu d times d. So this energy scale is uh, usually much, much smaller than the uh, kinetic energy of the electron. So once you have a large kinetic energy of an electron, then these uh, two perturbations are very, very small compared with this uh, kinetic energy. So that's why this uh, gamma value is usually very small. But sometimes uh, uh, this could be very enhanced. Then uh, once you have a very large gamma body, so you have some new physics, right? Then this uh, gamma gives a useful flow for electron states in solid. So especially once you go to the superconductor, so this uh, gamma value could be 10 to the fourth, Tesla inverse, Ampere inverse, which is uh, six or seven orders of magnitude larger than this uh, typical uh, uh, systems, right? So then I will uh, describe uh, why this uh, gamma is so large in superconductor and the uh, reason to the diode effect in the superconductors. But uh, before going to the superconductivity, so let me uh, mention about the other case where this uh, uh, historical response is uh, enhanced, namely due to the Dirac chain metals. So the reason why the Dirac chain metal is so special is the uh, point, because these are uh, band crossing, namely the uh, wide points in momentum state, is actually correspond to the sink and source of the very curvature in momentum space. Uh, namely, there is a, a divergent very curvature near the bump crossing point, right? So that's why we expect that this uh, geometric nature of the cross wave function is uh, quite enhanced and correspondingly this uh, non distorted transport also. And actually, uh, this enhancement has been already experimentally uh, confirmed in this uh, uh, zirconium telluride and also tungsten dipolar, right? So in these materials, they have uh, this uh, direct cone or a uh, wide cone, and then uh, correspondingly, this uh, enhanced uh, very curvature leads to the uh, very large non discovered transport. And also uh, this uh, enhancement is uh, uh, appearing in the non discovered optical response Namely, the second order uh, process with respect to the electric field of light. And then uh, uh, we talked about this uh, uh, divergent uh, of optical conductivity, second order in the uh, electric field of light. So, but uh, this is not the main topics I want to uh, talk about today. So, now let me back to the uh, superconductivity. So, the reason why uh, you have uh, uh, enhanced non for transport is the uh, forums. Uh, so, this is a usual fermionic transport. So, you have a large kinetic energy of fermi particle, fermi energy of uh, uh, individual fermion, right? And then this asymmetric potential is a very weak potential compared with the kinetic energy, right? But uh, once you have uh, uh, fluctuating <coughs> superconductivity, namely the boson superpair will be the main player for the transport. Right? So, in this uh, low energy or uh, low current uh, window, so your non reciprocal nature will be uh, very enhanced. So, the reason is that the typical kinetic energy of this uh, uh, superpair is uh, uh, given by this. Gap value in the uh, superconducting uh, uh, superconducting order parameter, right? And then <clears throat> this uh, gap energy gap is actually comparable to the magnetic field or the spin orbit interaction. So then this uh, superconductivity introduces the small new energy scale uh, into this problem, 
species uh, associated with this bosonic transport. Right. So uh, this is basically the reason why you have this enhanced like this group of, of transport in super long But uh, uh, for the moment, I will talk about this uh, resistive state where the fluctuation of the uh, superconductivity play a uh, major role uh, before the Meissner effect will show up. So this is the first experiment in, in Kampa, I encounter uh, to, uh, to be motivated by the, this uh, non discrocal transport. Uh, namely, here is a transformator dichar coordinate uh, for the molybdenum disulfide. Okay. So uh, this system, has a so called a easy effect in splitting. And then there's a band structure uh, in, in two dimensional momentum space, right? And then uh, this uh, uh, out of frame magnetic field uh, breaks uh, uh, mirror symmetry in frame, right? And then uh, we have uh, a typical band structure uh, given by this passive expression, right? So uh, let me explain what happens. So the one is uh, this uh, uh, trigonal working part, which is lambda, which is coming from the uh, spin orbit interaction. And also the Zeeman splitting by delta V by the uh, external magnetic field. And also the uh, this uh, easing effect spin orbit interaction uh, given by this sub term, right? Uh, fourth term, right? And then <clears throat> once you have uh, this uh, spin orbit interaction, and then the S wave here, then I end up with uh, uh, this random expansion in terms of uh, order parameter and its momentum. And this uh, momentum contains the uh, third order term, right, like that. And then uh, this uh, third order term is proportional to capital gamma, uh, capital lambda, and the magnetic field B. So this uh, uh, capital lambda contains the spin orbit interaction, right? And uh, B term it breaks a uh, uh, time reverse asymmetry. Then this uh, cubic term play a uh, uh, most important role with the non disproper transport. Uh, namely, I can follow the old theory by Schmidt. Uh, calculating the uh, paraconductivity in terms of a uh, time dependent into lambda theory. And then uh, we have a uh, first order term in electric field and the uh, second order term in electric field together. And then this uh, second order term has this symmetry. And the uh, epsilon is uh, basically P minus PC approaching above the transition temperature. And then uh, the, this uh, second order term is the uh, epsilon minus square. And then the epsilon uh, linear term is epsilon inverse. Then you can define the uh, gamma value due to this uh, paraconductivity, right? And this uh, gamma S due to the paraconductivity compared with the normal state gamma value is actually uh, EF over KBPC cubed, right? So uh, this is represent the fit that we replace the kinetic energy in terms of uh, uh, KBPC, which is basically the delta which is the superconducting state. And this uh, uh, third order term gives rise to this uh, cubic power. And then this uh, uh, value could be uh, sometimes a medium or a 10 kb in five or so. And then <clears throat> this experiments and shows uh, uh, exactly that behavior. Namely, in this uh, fermionic transport region, there is almost no gamma part of that. But uh, approaching to the uh, mean field transition temperature, so uh, this uh, gamma value goes up. And actually, our estimation is around uh, uh, 500. So then uh, this uh, uh, mean field transition temperature near 9 Kelvin. So this value is almost uh, 1,000. So this uh, 1,000 is already much bigger than this uh, typical normal state value. So that's why uh, uh, we believe that our uh, prediction about the paraconductivity for the non spoken transport is uh, experimentally consistent with uh, this observation. 
But uh, if you go into the lower temperature, so the physics is dominated by the uh, vortex motion. Because you apply the out of plane magnetic field, then vortices are uh, introduced by this ability, right? And then the resistivity is determined by the motion of the vortices. So in that case, the, the crypto or effective gamma body is a gigantically enhanced up to the almost uh, 10,000. Yeah. Okay. So, size the superconductor mm -hmm. water parameter. Yeah. So, with this, this uh, uh, phenomenological function, we can yeah. calculate the uh, paraconductivity. Yeah. The paraconductivity is the superconducting current or is it just fluctuation? Uh, yeah, it's a fluctuation induced uh, conductivity. So, so basically, the boson will contribute to the uh -huh. um, but it's not super current. So it's, it's not still, that super current. Still, you, you have yeah. some finite with activity. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, interestingly, in 2D case, yeah, we are talking about the 2D. You right. know, then there is no lifetime appearing in this paraconductivity. Right. So, which has been known for many years for the 2D paraconductivity. Oh. So that's why like, starting from the first line of Hamiltonian, yeah. you can derive the second you line. You can just derive the second. Yeah. Line. What was the origin of the second term in the first line in the Hamiltonian? Yeah, so you can expand your yeah. So this uh, free energy expression is uh, given by the uh, uh, expansion with respect to the green function. Uh -huh. uh, propagator corresponding to this uh, first line. Right? These are four by four matrix for the. So my question is, what yeah. was the origin of the second term in the Hamiltonian? Yeah, that, this is lambda is due to the spin orbit interaction. Spin orbit interaction. So people call it the trigonal working. So uh, as you can see, so this uh, shape of this pocket. I, I see. So this yeah. special functional form kx square minus three times ky square is mm -hmm. the specific property of this band structure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, this reflects the symmetry of the crystal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah. So once you uh, have uh, this bound structure and assume the singlet pairing. But uh, uh, actually, you have a, a mixture of a singlet and triplet in the order parameter, even though you assume the on site pairing only. Okay. So the consequent uh, uh, pairing symmetry which is a mixture of a singlet and triplet. Mm -hmm. And that means also the uh, S wave and the P wave. Automatically because you break the inversion symmetry. But uh, once you don't break the inversion symmetry, then you can define the pseudo spin, mm -hmm. right? And this Kramer uh, uh, theorem uh, guarantees the uh, degeneracy of the spin up and spin down mm -hmm. pseudo spin. Mm -hmm. uh, then the story is uh, quite similar to the inversion symmetry case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, only when, uh, no. Uh, without the spin of this. Just to replace the spin up and down in terms of the shoot spin. That is uh, enough once you have an uh, inversion symmetry. But then if you break the inversion symmetry, then you have a spin split. Mm -hmm. So then it's uh, quite different from the uh, system without the spin of mm -hmm. So that's why the inversion symmetry combined with the spin orbit interaction is uh, essential for yeah this kind of so then uh, then for this superconducting diode effect you need both the magnetic field and the spin orbit and the uh, inversion symmetry field. Mm -hmm. These are three are essential. What was the first one? So magnetic field. Yeah magnetic field. So because this uh, uh, cubic term contains a field. 
And, and you can tell from this current expression, yeah. this yeah. diverges at the critical temperature. Yeah. And you can, re um, can you relate the properties to for each given material? Just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you plug in the uh, values for the uh, material. So yeah. that's in a very general. Yeah, yeah but. Uh, this is uh, this a uh, particular class of material. Right? Yeah, yeah. So the symmetry dictates the uh, possible terms. Yeah. So then uh, this uh, trigonal symmetry and uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, some kind of a uh, transmitter that you put. Okay. So then, then now we have a uh, uh, more uh, broad classification. Yeah, as you mentioned, so actually the symmetry really matters. Uh, for example, if you have a rational superconductor, right, instead of uh, uh, this uh, eigenvalue uh, superconductor, then uh, in that case you apply the inframe right, that breaks the uh, mirror symmetry, right. And also, for example, the uh, transition as suppose they issue the surface state and superconductivity. So then, usually, you, you apply the magnetic field in frame. So, in that case, you do not introduce the vortices, right? Because it's a 2D, and then you apply the in frame magnetic field. So, uh, for the vortices, you need out of frame magnetic field. So, in that case, uh, interestingly, is a quarter surface transition suffice. But uh, in this uh, Gimbrandau expansion, you have uh, a cubic term also. But the uh, vortices are positive in that case. Yeah, well, of course, uh, it is a summary activated vortices, but uh, you can have a quarter surface transition. So these are binding and unbinding uh, vortices transition occurs, right? So then uh, we have uh, some critical phenomena of this gamma bar towards the KT transition temperature. That was a prediction uh, we made in this paper, 2018. And the prediction was this uh, gamma S is uh, diverging towards the uh, KT transition temperature due to this uh, uh, binding and unbinding transition priorities. And antibodies, and then the power is uh, minus three halves. So actually, I talked to this theory to Tokuyama, and then somehow he agreed uh, to confirm our prediction. So this is a system uh, we studied, uh, they studied. And then with the superconductivity at the bismuth telluride and the iron telluride interface. And that this interface, the two dimensional superconductivity, maybe topological superconductivity will show up. But uh, phenomenologically, it really shows the KT type transition, costal service type transition. So the resistivity uh, behaves like that. And uh, actually, uh, this uh, ID characteristic, and uh, this ID characteristic uh, becomes uh, uh, V proportional to IQ, right? So this is a typical behavior of a KT transition. And also, yeah, so this uh, temporal dependence is also quite consistent with uh, KT transition. And now once you have uh, this uh, KT transition, as I mentioned, so this uh, uh, gamma value should diverge, and then uh, this uh, gamma value uh, towards the KT transition temperature is uh, going up, and this uh, uh, blue car is uh, uh, exponent minus 1.5, and uh, this seems to be well fitted by this uh, theoretical prediction. So then this uh, uh, experiment we did is the uh, confirmation of our uh, theory about the, the diverging gamma value towards the KT transition. Right. So this is our story. And then 
we proceed to the Weissner phase. Uh, namely, below the real transition temperature, not the towards the uh, transition temperature from above, then we can talk about the uh, diode effect. Uh, namely, if you have a superconducting state, you have a zero resistive state, but uh, above some critical current density or critical current value, then it will jump to the normal state. Right? So this is uh, a IPD characteristic. And the similar things can be measured for this uh, bulk sample. And then uh, the function of the magnitude, so you have a uh, difference of uh, uh, IC, uh, the positive direction and negative direction. So you have uh, this uh, uh, red cup and the green cup, right? So then uh, this uh, zero magnitude, you don't have any diode effect. But then if you have uh, some finite magnitude, so then uh, this uh, <coughs> it's an uh, odd function of the magnitude. Namely, this uh, red and uh, uh, green is the exchange for the, uh, between the positive and the negative magnitude. So the B field is uh, needed. And this uh, uh, diode effect is uh, basically proportional or if uh, odd function of this, right? So this is one experiment. But the other experiment, so this is for the Jokeston junction. This is a, like a bulk superconducting diode effect. And this is a Jokeston junction. And in that case, your IP characteristic shows a hysteric behavior. So you have a jump and a hysteresis, right? So in that case, as you can see, even at the zero magnitude, here is the diode. So the direction dependence of a critical time for us. And also uh, it is a diode effect, a diode effect is the even function of a magnitude. So the positive and negative, you have a same diode effect, right? So these are two different behavior. But uh, notice that this is a part, but uh, this is a Joseph junction. So I think this is a key difference between the two cases. And uh, following this uh, first observation of a uh, uh, Josephson uh, or superconducting diode effect, there are two uh, following uh, experimental works. So the one is uh, to interpret this uh, diode effect in terms of uh, uh, analogy to the magnetic anastrophy. Uh, previously, we talked about this uh, resistivity is uh, given by this uh, gamma tau, right? namely B cross I times gamma. But instead, we are talking about the inductance L. So the inductance contains the term proportional to the product of the B field and the I field. And actually, uh, in the Josephson junction case, so this uh, L is uh, given by the V over D I D T. But uh, once you have uh, this uh, D I D T, uh, I is uh, given by the phase difference between the two superconductors. Right? Then <clears throat> this uh, L is uh, basically given by D phi D I. Right? So once you have uh, a relationship, phase current relationship, then it's a derivative is uh, uh, nothing but the uh, inductance for this uh, Josephson junction. Right? And then you have a non bespoke uh, inductance, like uh, uh, given by this expression. Then you have a difference uh, between the uh, two critical current density for the positive and the negative direction. So this is a scenario proposed by uh, this uh, uh, paper. But actually, uh, this is uh, uh, quite uh, consistent with the previous works or uh, our theory. And then uh, simply they uh, have uh, uh, this uh, uh, interpretation and also the direct measurement of this inductance in this uh, Joseph's junction case. But uh, another paper by MIT group is uh, somehow proposing another mechanism. So, which is uh, related to the uh, anisotropic or asymmetric uh, vortex edge and surface barriers. Right? Because you apply the magnitude, so automatically you are uh, create 
the vortices, and uh, this uh, motion of the vortices will uh, create a voltage drop, right? So this is a usual story. But uh, once this uh, vortex uh, feels the uh, barriers, potential barriers, which is asymmetric, then depending on the direction of the current, then the direction of the force acting on the vortex is reversed, right? So then once uh, this, uh, uh, these uh, barriers are different between the upward and the downward, then you end up with uh, uh, asymmetry of uh, critical time density. So that is a, a story proposed by this uh, MIT paper. Right? So uh, they say it's uh, around 60% uh, of uh, uh, diode effect is observed in this uh, extrinsic uh, mechanism. But uh, now, experimentally, the uh, mechanism of this uh, diode effect is uh, still controversial. So then we need a uh, uh, close comparison between the theoretical analysis and the experimental uh, observation are uh, required still at the moment. So the field itself is still controversial in many respects. But uh, let me back to the more so-called the queen story of our theory. So then, as I mentioned before, once you have uh, uh, invariant symmetry and time reverse asymmetry equation, so we could have uh, all the powers of uh, momentum Q in this uh, initial angle of expansion, right? So once you have uh, this uh, eta term, uh, for example, the cubic term, and then uh, we can have uh, asymmetry of a superconducting term, critical value, right? So the rest of the calculation is rather straightforward because once you have uh, this free energy function, then we can argue about the critical current for the floating breaking of a superconductivity. And uh, skipping the details, then we can define the quality factor for the difference of uh, left and right current critical density. And then uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, some complicated expression in the Gensurand theory, but uh, uh, we can actually uh, calculate numerically this uh, Rashiba superconductivity as a function of the Kendo potential, and then we end up with uh, quite a good agreement uh, between the numerical estimation and the estimation from the Gensurand theory. So uh, that's why <clears throat> uh, we believe that uh, this uh, bulk uh, superconducting diode effect uh, can be described by uh, this uh, Rashba type Hamiltonian. And then it, it's a typical value is uh, 10 to the minus C or 10 to the minus T. So not that large. Uh, and then uh, we went to the uh, Josephson junction case. But uh, <clears throat> before going that, uh, let me mention about the role of uh, spin orbit interaction and also the uh, time reverse asymmetry break. So I said that spin orbit and the invariant symmetry breaking and time reverse symmetry breaking, these are three are essential. But actually, even without the spin orbit interaction, uh, we could have a uh, diode. So that we notice uh, uh, this. Is. So then I need to uh, correct my statement about the spin orbit interaction. So that comes from this uh, uh, superconductivity in chiral nanotube. So this uh, first uh, USA group measured this. Uh, uh, non disproper transport in this uh, nanotube system of uh, tungsten disulfide. So uh, actually, if you can see this uh, figure, then this is a chiral nanotube, right? So then the direction of the current, right? This way and this way, give rise to the different base speed. More explicitly, it shows the non disproper little path oscillation. So the little path oscillation is uh, so-called uh, oscillation of uh, uh, resistivity near the superconducting transition. And then uh, because of the uh, flux penetrating this uh, tube, 
the direction the ahom bomb effect for the superconducting order parameter or uh, transient temperature Tc. That results in the oscillating behavior of a resistivity near the transient temperature. And the true omega component corresponds to the non disturbable component. Okay, so then we are interested in this analogy with the chiral symmetry. Uh, for example, if we have uh, this uh, uh, basic lattice with the A and B direction different, right? And then we roll out this uh, symmetry, uh, this analogy with the angle here. Right. And then simply uh, we have uh, this lattice structure and the tilt rolling down. Right. So then we don't have any spionic that, and also we don't have a Zima theory. So this is uh, a model we have. And then uh, we start from uh, this uh, uh, lattice, base lattice, and the tilt. With the angle theta. And then this is a tube direction and it's a transverse direction. And that we call the x and y. Okay. So then with respect to this uh, x, we have uh, uh, all border parts because of this uh, tube in theta. And then for the transverse direction, we quantize the momentum along the y direction because it is a period. And then the flux then creating this uh, nanotube by shift uh, this uh, momentum quantization, right? So then including all this uh, effect, then we end up with a uh, gyro effect for this uh, nanotube. Without any spinovic interaction, just a tube in the structure, gyro structure, and then uh, this is a gyro effect as a function of uh, uh, flux, right? Once you have a zero flux, this is zero. Dial effect is gone. And also, uh, quantized flux, you are back to the original. But the uh, intermediate, you have a variety of phenomena uh, depending on the radius, small r. And then uh, you have a relatively large dial effect, typically of the order of uh, 20 minus 2. So then this uh, number two is uh, another interesting system for the superconducting diode. Okay, but now even more uh, enhanced uh, diode effect could be observed in the uh, Josephson junction. Because Josephson junction, you have some weak link between the two superconductors. And the effect of the broken symmetry will be enhanced because in these regions, so the energy scale is uh, reduced compared with the bulk superconductor. So then uh, we try to formulate this problem in terms of uh, uh, topological superconducting, uh, uh, topological insulator state, the surface state, and then attach the superconductor on top of this topological insulator. And then we formulate the Josephson current in this system under the applied magnitude. And then we end up with a, a very large Josephson uh, diode effect, right? Uh, typically of the order of uh, 0.2, right? Around the 20 percentage of uh, diode effect to be uh, expected. For, for this uh, Josephson uh, effect, right? But uh, interestingly, uh, once you have uh, these uh, systems, we have uh, many uh, control parameters of a diode effect. So the is the magnetization and the length and temperature and gate volumes. Uh, these parameters could be used to control the magnitude and also the sign of this uh, diode effect. So this is an advantage of a Josephson uh, diode because uh, of uh, these uh, many parameters uh, compared with the bulk uh, superconducting diode effect. And another more sophisticated configuration is the DA group treated with the angle alpha and beta. 
which is sandwich, So then broken time reverse symmetry comes from this uh, uh, this uh, barrier of magnetic insulin. So in that case, you can tune this uh, alpha and the beta values, uh, and then you have a, a hot spot, like uh, this uh, blue one or red part in the uh, space of uh, alpha and beta, the angles of a uh, D-wave row. And then this uh, uh, superconducting diode effect or uh, Josephson diode effect to be of the order of uh, point 0.4. So then it becomes a very uh, large as the uh, Josephson junction effect is uh, considered. And the even more interesting case is that this uh, 1D Josephson junction with the S NS. Uh, configuration and then <clears throat> uh, this uh, modular fermion appears at the boundary between S and N and the uh, end of the uh, superconducting wire. And these are modular uh, bound state play a crucial role to control the uh, current phase relationship uh, of uh, uh, this uh, composite system. And then uh, this system can be controlled by the external magnetic field B. And then <clears throat> this uh, B uh, could be smaller than the speaker, but it then it remains a trivial, to put it a trivial state. But above that, you have uh, uh, created the major uh, uh, bound state. And this uh, major bound state, as you can see, enhance this uh, diode effect very appreciably, including the sign change. So the role of a uh, uh, zero energy bound state, modular on the bound state, play a crucial role to determine the sign and also the magnitude of a diode effect. So this is another uh, possible uh, proposal for the enhanced uh, Josephson diode effect proposal to superconductors. Okay, so now, a, sorry. Right. Um, is there any intuition for why this mm. the topological case mm. increases? Okay, so this is a good question. And actually, once you have uh, uh, this uh, zero energy state, state so <clears throat> but, uh, we are talking about some finite, finite events, right? Then there is a tiny overlap of a uh, uh, modular bound state, which is exponentially small. And then uh, this uh, device to the very fine structure of uh, energy level, which is controlled by this uh, external uh, phase difference, right? So these are uh, uh, energy levels as a function of the phase difference is nothing but the superconducting Josephson current. So once you have uh, this uh, very energy, small energy scale, so you have an uh, enhanced delivery. Right, so this is uh, daily becomes a really large once you have a uh, nearly zero energy state, which originates from the originally uh, marginal bound state, but the uh, uh, weak interaction with each other. So that gives you the very fine structure of an uh, energy state, nearly zero energy. So that gives the uh, very large derivative with respect to the phase difference. So that is the reason why. Okay. But now back to the uh, another type of uh, Josephson effect, uh, namely without the uh, external magnetic field. So what gives rise to the uh, Josephson junction diode, right? So then uh, we consider the foreign model. Namely, previously, we are interested in this uh, <clears throat> uh, this stuff, right? So this is uh, coming from the uh, inductance, right? But uh, now for this uh, Josephson junction system, we have a charging energy also, capacitance, right? And the uh, resistance. So this uh, junction Josephson effect, and the capacitance and the resistance. These are the three elements 
of a uh, uh, Jenny Joseph Mangash. Right. So now the important thing is uh, this uh, capital Q and the phase five are canonical conjugate to each other. So maybe uh, once you have uh, uh, commutator between the phi and Q, then it has a very similar relationship between the X and T. Okay? So now these are phi and the Q dynamics are compact with each other. Because it's a more like a, a position and the momentum, right? And then this is a Josephson uh, equation. Phi dot is uh, given by this uh, charging energy derivative with respect to Q. And the Q dot is uh, given by the uh, energy Hamiltonian derivative with respect to Phi, right? So, and also uh, because of this resistivity, actually we have uh, this addition of, right? because the Q dot is nothing but the current flowing between this side and this side, right? And then here we have uh, asymmetry in the charging energy. Once you have a charge transfer from one to the other side, then <clears throat> once you have a different superconductor between here and here, then the charging energy should be also different, right? So because it, it, the charge plus and minus should be asymmetric because uh, this uh, superconductor in both sides of the junction is different. And then the charging energy Q and the minus Q should be asymmetric, right? So then we have uh, this, uh, uh, order term with respect to this charging energy. Right? So then we can define the effective time reverse asymmetry. Namely, uh, as you interpret this uh, phi as a position x and q as a momentum, right? and then that uh, effective time reversal means q goes to minus q because you a time reversal operation reverse the uh, sign of a P, momentum, right? So then this uh, effective Hamiltonian breaks uh, uh, this uh, time reverse asymmetry. Q goes to minus Q. So this uh, inversion and time reverse asymmetry breaking is enough to have uh, Josephson diode. Once you consider this uh, charging energy becomes the relevance, this so that is the scenario we have. And uh, once you have uh, this uh, charging energy, and then this uh, uh, dynamics in the phase space of a Q and uh, uh, Phi have a uh, asymmetric shape. And uh, this uh, trajectory in this uh, Phi and theta, uh, Phi and uh, uh, charge Q give rise to this uh, uh, two feature. So one is uh, this uh, jump and the hysteric behavior, and the other is the asymmetry between the positive and negative direction. So this is the one scenario for the uh, Josephson diode effect. Then because uh, you need the charging energy very much. But then in the case of uh, uh, bulk superconductor, this uh, charging uh, energy is uh, usually very much. Only when you charge up, right, in this uh, tunneling junction. Then the uh, uh, charging Q, Q square and the Q higher order term becomes the red bar. So then the Josephson junction are quite different from this uh, bulk superconducting diode effect. So that is our uh, proposal. But uh, still, this uh, experiment is uh, rather difficult to interpret. So then uh, at the very last part of my talk, uh, I went to the Q plate. So then because Q plate is a full of uh, electron collision, then what happens if you have uh, inversion symmetry in Q plates? Then the, what is the transfer? <clears throat> so this is a brief interaction of uh, a with state in Q plate. Uh, I studied this a long time ago. Uh, nearly 30 years ago. And then this uh, phase diagram in Q plate 
uh, interpret it in terms of uh, uh, spinon pairing. The spinon is a uh, uh, this uh, particle in this uh, resonating valence bond state by Phil Anderson. And then the, this uh, singlet formation gives rise to some uh, liquid state in the dog case. Right? And then the spinon is uh, this unpaired spin. And the holon is this uh, charged neutral, but the positively charged, sorry, not the charged neutral, uh, positively charged vacancy of uh, uh, this uh, uh, now, right? So then this could be applied, uh, this could be described by this uh, so-called uh, plane boson type in field theory. And this one corresponds to the onset of a spin on pairing. And this one corresponds to the Bose condensation of this uh, oil, right? And these are two uh, phase transition become the crossover in their system and uh, uh, experimental uh, situation could be interpreted in terms of this uh, infield type screwdriver. So <clears throat> then another uh, correction to this mean field theory is the uh, gauge field uh, correction to uh, this uh, mean field theory. But in any case, based on this uh, mean field theory, uh, we have uh, some uh, prediction about the non reciprocal transport. So uh, we are motivated by the two recent experiments. So the one is a, a spin resolved RFS on the surface of a, a triplet superconductor by Lanzara group. And uh, as you can see, uh, they have a rather large spin splitting on the surface states of uh, uh, triplets. And the other experiment is uh, in this uh, uh, synthion sample, uh, which breaks the inversion symmetry again. And then uh, they observe the scanning, uh, which is uh, usually uh, representing the inversion symmetry breaking in the uh, rash type interaction in, on the surface of uh, this accumulates, uh, right? So then in any case, the spin orbit should be quite relevant to this accumulate uh, uh, also, because kappa is a 3D. And the typical spin orbit interaction of a kappa is a 40 or 50 milliliter, so not that small. And uh, once you break the inversion symmetry, this uh, spin orbit will play a crucial role uh, at the surface of the same sample of a uh, cuplet. So then uh, we try to include uh, this uh, broken inversion symmetry in cuplets for the uh, single layer sample. And then this uh, uh, spin orbit uh, of a Rashiba type is included in this Hamiltonian. So these are new features uh, compared with the previous three uh, boson theory. And then everything uh, after this is a uh, trade work. And then uh, we try to calculate this uh, gamma value in the normal state. And also the paraconductivity contribution to the gamma value and also the superconducting diode effect. And actually depending on the whole concentration, so the picture of a superconducting trench are quite different. So in the overdock regime, so you have a, a pairing of a, a spinon occurs at the transient temperature. But in the underdog case, the uh, transition is driven by the both condensation of the whole right? So this represents the huge difference of the gamma value uh, between the underdog and the overdog cases. So order of uh, magnitude defines uh, gamma value. And also the quality factor in the diode uh, effect is also quite different. It should be very large compared with the underdog case. But uh, if you go to the normal state, so this uh, uh, gamma value in the normal state is uh, much, much smaller compared with this uh, uh, under case. So the magnitude is uh, so non-monotonic uh, as a function of delta and also as a function of the temperature. So 
So this uh, unique feature is coming from the strong correlation in cuprate. And the combining this uh, spoon of it with the uh, uh, strong correlation play a uh, uh, crucial role to determine the non monotonous and non trivial behavior of a uh, uh, gamma body or non spoke transport and mm -hmm. uh, so the systems. Right? So this is our uh, <laughs> proposal. And the non spoke non linear transport is a sensitive probe for the charge dynamics of our cuprates. So I think this is some uh, new direction to study the high PC cubes from the different angle compared with before. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry I uh, a little bit uh, over time, but the the message in my talk was uh, non discipline transport in quantum materials is a very sensible sensitive tool to reduce the uh, carrier dynamics. And uh, there are many interesting physics inside this uh, nonlinear response to the lowest order, because second order is the lowest nonlinear response. But uh, already uh, many, many uh, physics are uh, included, and uh, especially talking about the quantum and classical crossover and geometry and topology and uh, electron correlation and also phenomenal interaction, etc. All these are uh, 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 elements are relevant to this uh, non reciprocal uh, and uh, non linear response of uh, quantum materials. So that's why I think uh, this will open the new uh, field in the study of uh, unique matter systems. Okay. So that, that is uh, all that I want to say. And uh, thank you for your attention. I was there. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor oh, uh, Nagel. Yeah. So, I think we have some time for questions. Okay. Hi, Dr. Professor. Yeah, Dr. Professor. As a measure of topological invariant, yeah. so for example, maybe. Compared to linear response, yeah. so what's better mm -hmm. for the nonlinear transport coefficient than yeah. the reciprocal? Or is there anything, any good proof more than linear response? Yeah, actually, as far as I know, uh, there is only one proposal about uh, quantization of a nonlinear which is uh, injection part. Why? But uh, yeah, but the uh, injection current includes the uh, lifetime of uh, carriers, for carriers. So then this uh, computation is not that exact in that sense. So as I think another proposal is by Charlie Ken. Yeah, he's talking about a very clean ballistic transport metal. So in that case, somehow he connects this uh, non discovery uh, non-linear transport. Or even the Joseph can do that to uh, the number. So these are the two examples, uh, as I noted, for the quantization of the non linear response quality. So the optical is uh, very difficult. I think that we should uh, stick to the transport to have an exact quantization, as in the case of the quantum whole system. So I think that my, my feeling is that if you go to this non linear response, then the geometry is not more important, but the quantization is not more important. But the geometric nature of a response is a more evident if you go to the non linear response. Actually, if you can derive the uh, expression for uh, non discrocal uh, response multiple system, then you end up with uh, several terms, which is relevant to the twist pair symbol or uh, very curvature, uh, quantum metric, and so on. So, all these are related to the non Euclidean uh, geometry. So, you can formulate in terms of the quantum geometry. 
and this appears uh, very easily if you go to the second law. But uh, once you uh, uh, confine in a linear response, so the most of the case you, you just uh, have a chunk number and uh, then you have it down. But, uh, more rich structure appears if you go to the second law that we in the shadow. Then, for example, the Riemann capture, Riemannian capture for the third order function. In the high piece part, in the last piece. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Maybe this question may not be very important. Do you think of the confinement, the confinement transition so effect uh, on the, mm. due to the role of speed of the cotton? Previously, mm. the main difference is this. Think in the case, the bulk case, yeah. if, if except for the dimensionality, yeah. so the presence of speed of coupling in the slave is maybe, I don't know if this is really, I mean, the yeah. physical sample or fantasy about I mean, yeah. the physical, I mean, certainly a well defined question. Yeah. Yeah, confinement should affect this um, yeah, transport, I think, in an essential way. But uh, yeah, but the confinement problem in finite temperature is uh, a little bit. Yeah, my question is more clear the role of speed of the oh, yeah, in, yeah, in that crossover or transition mm. is, Do you have any physical insight? I yeah, it is in mm. analysis. Yeah, actually, we saw uh, this uh, mean field distribution in the presence of a spinovic induction, mm -hmm. but the global structure doesn't change so much. Yeah, but uh, actually, we introduced some uh, triplet uh, type. Uh, well, we have a so called uh, F dagger and uh, also FDF, etc. This is the order part that we have, right? Mm -hmm. But now, uh, once we have a spin of interaction, we should introduce a triplet F dagger, for example. Then that is the origin of this unknown, this global variable. So the uh, structure of the main view uh, order parameter are slightly modified, but the gradual, uh, global structure is uh, not that different. But the, we have some mixture of a single contributor, for example, including this uh, uh, superconducting or pairing or the factor, and also this uh, uh, chi, so called uh, chi or the factor, such as the M dagger. Right? But uh, except this, it, the structure is uh, very simple. Um, can you explain yeah. why there is the hysteresis Ah, I see. I see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this one. <laughs> yeah, actually, if you draw the. Uh, yeah. Very naively, if you saw this. Uh, uh, Canonical equation of a pi and q, then you can you can see very easily that there is some uh, jump, right? Because uh, here is some metastable states, for example. So yeah, you, you have a coexistence of a uh, uh, two trajectory, which is uh, energetically metastable, but uh, coexists in some region. And yeah, that you can see from uh, this uh, phase space trajectory. But uh, that is a mathematical uh, explanation. And why is uh, physical... So I know in like, cold atom systems, they can have some uh, kind of superfluid just some junctions that have hysteresis loops. Yeah, um, but they rely on, say, having multiple modes that suppress tunneling um, and having dissipation. It's kind of thing that 
not sure how. Yeah, really actually, nice. in this case, uh, even without the division, I think uh, I think I would have. Uh, yeah, I think you could have a uh, jump even without the uh, dissipation. Yeah. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, at the moment, I don't have a uh, uh, simple physical explanation about this uh, this case behavior. But uh, yeah, without this uh, diary, uh, this uh, hysteric behavior has been known for many years. For the, this is not our point. Uh, yeah, this, uh, once you solve this equation, couple the equation for a charge in the case, then you could have a sense. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, really established already for many years. Our only contribution is uh, to think about the asymmetry to the uh, charge in energy. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, maybe, maybe you can compare it with the nonlinear oscillators uh, since the energy uh, has Partly terms in Q. Yeah, so yeah. They, as you see, if you just they have some nonlinear later or mm -hmm. pendulum, and there might be some history. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. you can compare it to a classical system. Yeah, yeah that's an exactly mm -hmm. good one to this system. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I think. Is there any online or oh, any like oh. maybe the chat? Who's raising hand? Okay. Okay. okay, so just a very quickly an advertisement. So as an uncle also is giving a lecture series. So tomorrow mm -hmm. he will talk about shift current in non-center symmetric quantum materials mm -hmm. and Wednesday. Um, the dynamics of skirmion is driven by current. And mm -hmm. so I think without further ado, can we please thank the speaker again for a great yeah, talk? Yeah, thank you very much.